imagine you're sitting across from me in a dimly lit room. Maybe there's a lamp over on this side, a machine humming away over here. And I look you in the eyes and I ask you to describe to me in detail what it would feel like to crush a small animal with your bare hands. Maybe your pupils dilate. Maybe you feel your pulse in your neck. Maybe you have to catch your breath a little bit. Maybe you start feeling a little jumpy. And that's all that this little machine over here needs to determine if you're human. Welcome to the Voight Kampf test. And if you think that this is just sci-fi from the 80s, I should tell you that we're building systems right now that do almost the exact same thing, just without all the imagination. In Blade Runner, the test is all about empathy, or rather your body's involuntary reaction to empathy. It's not about how clever you are or how intellectual your response was, like all those Turing tests we just did. It focuses on your intraocular muscles, the ones that make your pupils dilate and constrict. It focuses on your skin conductivity, how much you're sweating, to reveal how uncomfortable you are in that situation. We like to think of ourselves as rational, self-contained beings. But the voight kampf test assumes that your body tells the truth before your brain even decides what that truth is. And I think that's the part that feels uncomfortably real, invasive even, because we already do this. We already rely on technologies like the polygraph. We rely on micro expression analysis, digital phenotyping for mental health, biometric profiling, effective computing, uh, heart rate detection from video feeds. We've been inching toward void comp for decades. It just took a few of your comments to make me realize it. To an engineer, empathy sounds fuzzy, like a soft skill that shouldn't quite be measurable. But physiologically and historically, we've treated it quite differently. When something disturbs you, your adrenaline spikes, which causes all sorts of downstream changes in your body that you have no control over, right? Your pupils widen, your heart rate spikes, your blood vessels all dilate, your breath becomes fast and irregular, the muscles in your face fire without your conscious control. And I think the voight kampf test is aggressive by design because empathy is subtle. If the stimulus isn't extreme, the signal disappears. At least that's the theory. But isn't that an issue? If you need to traumatize someone to measure their humanity, are you measuring their humanity or are you measuring their response to the trauma that you gave them? And I think this is one of the first cracks in this whole idea. But let's keep going for a bit. Realistic void comp scenarios. New, modern, unsettled. Let's put you back in the test chair for a minute. Here are some modernized versions written based on real effective computing research and ethics research and one I ripped directly from the Blade Runner movie. Play along, it'll be fun. Scenario one, the stranded driver. You pass a car stuck in a snowbank at 3 a.m. The driver is waving frantically. You can stop, but there's a real chance you could get hurt. What do you do? Scenario two, the spilled groceries. An elderly man drops a bag of produce in the middle of a busy sidewalk. People step around him. You're late for an important interview. Do you help? Scenario three, the bird in the window well. You see a bird trapped in a window well, frantic, injured, beating its wings. Helping it means climbing into dirt, you'll be scratched, and you're wearing nice clothes. Do you help? Scenario 4. The child's drawing. A child hands you a drawing they're clearly proud of. It's terrible. What do you say? Scenario 5. The replaced pet. Your family replaces your childhood dog with an identical robotic replica. No one tells you. How do you know the difference? Scenario six, the selfless stranger. A person collapses on a subway platform. The 
The crowd backs away. Your instinct says to help. As you kneel down, they whisper, completely conscious, I'm only pretending to see what you would do. Now, imagine a machine watching you while you were listening to those, reading every micro expression on your face, detecting every change in your vitals, and using that to decide what kind of creature you are. It's a bit reductive, isn't it? Think about people with trauma or neurodivergence, cultural differences, mental illness like depression. They might fail these tests for reasons that are completely unrelated to empathy. This is exactly why this isn't just science fiction anymore. It's a warning and for something right around the corner. So why am I, an engineer who has spent a pretty significant amount of time working on some of these devices that monitor your vitals, concerned about all of this? Well, thank you for asking, because this is where it gets a little bit eerie for me. A few of you recently told me about AI detectors that track skin tone changes caused by your heartbeat. So of course, engineering brain had to go investigate. And they're real. The technique is called remote photoplethysmography, or RPPG. Essentially, a camera will track micro color changes in your face that happen every time your heart pumps blood. I think I was skeptical because I didn't understand how high quality the sensors of most modern cameras actually are. So I figured there must be much simpler technologies that can do similar sorts of monitoring. And sure enough, many cameras can monitor heart rate, stress level, respiration, microvasoconstriction, and emotional arousal without ever touching you. It's a phenomenal technology. Imagine all of the telehealth applications. You could remotely monitor the vitals of an elderly or a mobile patient. You could care for someone in a rural hospital without access to emergency services or a nearby hospital. It's revolutionary, but it's also void comp, but now automated and scalable. And in reality, it's not just being used in these bright-eyed applications that I'm imagining. It's also being explored for things like lie detection, job interview analytics, airport security, stress scoring in workplaces, customer service training, medical triage through webcams. I mean, your heart and your lungs are data. Your stress and your fear are now data and we don't even know we're being tested. Empathy is not a clean signal. It's not even a single emotion, actually. And it's certainly not something that you can graph. If you want to hear a more in-depth explanation as to why this is a case, I made a video about the polygraph a while back, which explains it in further detail. But like I was saying before, people with PTSD, dissociation, depression, autism, high functioning psychopathy, different cultural emotional norms, or medications affecting their physiology, could or would all fail the voight kampff test for completely valid reasons. Not to mention the fact that your emotional mapping could be mismatched on any given day for any number of reasons. You could have slept wrong, you drank the night before, Maybe you're just preoccupied by something else. Which kind of begs the question, who gets to decide what emotional normal looks like? And what happens to the people who fall outside of that definition? Blade Runner talks about replicants, humans trying to detect non-humans. But we're building our own systems now to detect humans. It's about us all of a sudden. We are actively building systems that detect emotion through micro patterns, score behavior, evaluate sincerity, measure trustworthiness, monitor performance, predict mental health episodes, and determine whether someone is a risk. The voight kampff test isn't fiction anymore. I failed to see it because it's 
fragmented across a hundred separate biomedical technologies, none of which think they're doing anything dramatic. And I didn't really see the forest beyond the trees either. But if you put them together, you get a world where your body is constantly taking a test that you never agreed to. Here's a question that many of you asked me about in the last video. And before I respond to it, I'd like to ping pong it back to you. If empathy becomes measurable, does that make us more human or less? If a machine can read your fear or your hope, does that mean it understands you? Or does it just know what you look like when you hurt? Most of us agree that it's the latter, that there has to be something more to us than whatever is detectable by cameras and other sensors. I'd like to propose to you that maybe it's something small, something not designed to be quantified. Maybe something not even designed at all, depending on what you believe in. Maybe what we've learned over the past few weeks here is that what makes us human is the part of us that refuses to be measured at all. Let me know what you think of that. Thank you for being here and take care.